Hello, my name is Rob Edwards and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, for possibly the last time in a while, we are talking Wheel of Time. Actually, more specifically, we are playing the Wheel of Time role-playing game. Uh, this came out in 2001 from Wizards of the Coast and it's based on the Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition. So it's a 20-year-old game system uh, and it's a little bit clunky as a result. Actually, we're also not really doing that either because we are playing this uh, using Roll20 for our dice rolls and character sheets and they don't have uh, a, a Wheel of Time character sheet built into Roll20 and I don't like any of the 3.5 character sheets they have in there so we're sort of faking it with 5th edition character sheets. So we're not... We're, we're not really... We're not really playing the Wheel of Time role-playing game, but it, it, it's it's a best effort. It's a best effort anyway. Um, also, this is being recorded after the fact because we had a few problems with the production of this video. And let's just say it ends in a strange place because the video stopped working. Uh, but it's still a good place to end. I've, I've picked a point where it actually makes sense for us to end it. Uh, and... What we end up with, in fact, here is a video not so much playing the Wheel of Time role-playing game as three very old friends getting together to have fun talking about Wheel of Time, rolling some occasional digital dice, uh, and sort of playing characters in the Wheel of Time world, but mostly just reading from the Wheel of Time wiki of square words. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. If that sounds like your thing, please do stay around. Uh, and I will let my players introduce themselves. Duncan, since you are significantly larger than Colin... Uh... <laughs> what are you saying? Well, that is true. Colin is sort of vertically aligned and you're horizontally aligned. <laughs> so there we go. Um, is this a, as opposed to lawful or chaotic? That's and... right, yes. Good. <laughs> All players. You can't talk to them, really. Um, Duncan, would you like to introduce yourself to my stream? So I'm Duncan, and I've played uh, many games with, with, with Rob, and they've all gone great. And he's an author of of two books, nearly. I believe I am Rial Fenter, the, um, um, someone who's not life-forsaken, and many other comments that we are going to come up with. Bessie Goats. We've, we, found, we found a Wheel of Time swear words page, and they are both very much looking forward to dipping into it. Uh, Colin, would you care to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Colin Lurie. I've been playing role-playing games with Rob Edwards since 1992, apparently. And I'm very much looking forward to playing the Wheel of Time role-playing game. 80s. 89. 89, that's a good point. 89, isn't it? 89. Good point, it was 89, yeah. That's you're 50 now. I forgot when I left school. Yeah, I'm a bit older than I think. <laughs> I think yeah, back then you were quite big and hairy, as I remember. Yeah, it's funny how these things change. Mm. Well, you mean you were? Yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Good point. You were I, was, I was considerably bigger and considerably hairier. Yeah, good point. Um, so... <laughs> Thank you for inviting Yes, thank you for inviting me. Before we start the game proper, uh, I just thought it'd be quite fun to have a quick chat about um, our experience of Wheel of Time. Uh, those people who've been watching my channel for a while now knows my general obsession about the whole thing. Uh, but uh, Duncan, uh, what's, uh, what's your history with Wheel of Time? So as I, I have mentioned in passing, I read the first book, I think we've established Wheel of Time, back in the early 90s. And I've been gradually working my way through them. I only finally read the last one probably two or three years ago. Right. So okay. I've, I've managed to um, go through about 25 years through these books. Wow. And I've actually started reading them again because I've realized I don't remember those first books. When I watched the series, oh, which was good. I watched the series. I thought it was a good series. It didn't match up with many of my memories. <laughs> 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 and I didn't know if that was my memory or maybe their interpretation of body issues. So, <laughs> so I remember. Probably the first, I'm guessing. <laughs> well, what about you? Uh, I own 14 out of 15 of them, but I've only read 
I've just finished reading the seventh one. I think I'm on just about to go on to Path of Daggers. Right. But they are... I, I read a lot, but I like to read books that don't take me the best part of three weeks of solid reading to read the damn uh, thousand pages. So I must admit, I, I, I read one, and then there's normally quite a big gap before I read the next, which I don't think really helps with my understanding of the thing. <laughs> I'm... Uh, I do, I thoroughly enjoy them actually, and I did start watching the series. I haven't got through more than the first couple of couple of episodes, mainly because I'm watching them with the misses, and, and I think she's sort of kind of lost interest a bit. But um, I will get into them a bit more. But it's, it's a great world, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, think... I thought the the, t- the t- I know that you've got another podcast on the TV series commentary. I appreciate that, but it was I, yeah. in retrospect, having actually read through the first couple of books again, they actually did do a, they probably did a good cut of it. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to how we go ahead. I mean, I, I'm not going to spend too long on this because it's not the purpose, purpose of today's video. But uh, when you think about all of the struggles they, their production went through during season one, uh, they had two extremely long, complete shutdowns of production because of COVID. Yeah. They had one of their main cast leave after six of their eight episodes. <laughs> um, and uh, all the stuff that that, that came with uh, those complications, uh, I think that the show was a pretty good, pretty good result considering all that. It's not. I know it's made some choices which not everyone is a fan of, and I get that. I, I completely get that. <laughs> but I've had a good time. With the same. It's good acting, isn't it? It is. I like Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt Corson's my favourite character in the book, and he's my favourite character. Favorite, favorite actor in the series, although apparently he's going to change, which is a bit of a shame. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. He is. Um, Barney Harris left after episode six. Um, I, I have to say that was the uh, the plot line that seemed to go slightly different to the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good guy. And that for a reason. Okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're here to play a role playing game, so I suggest we do that. Uh, for those of you who are watching, hello, I've forgotten you were there for a, for a moment there if I'm honest. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, today is not going to be the start of an epic long campaign. This is very much a one shot. We're just going to have a little bit of fun with it, enjoy a bit of Wheel, the Wheel of Time world. Uh, maybe have a passing reference or two to stuff which happens in the books. Uh, this, I mean, it doesn't really contain spoilers for the books, but it, it definitely contains no spoilers for the show. I've got one book reference really in here um, that's, that's, that could be construed as a spoiler depending on, on how much attention you're paying to what we talk about. Uh, anyway, let us begin. <laughs> Sorry Rob, you, you're saying we shouldn't be making any reference in case we do spoilers. <laughs> uh, I mean, too much reference. I mean, don't, don't, don't talk too much about <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be the source of the spoilers. That's what you're saying, yeah? Let's, let's have that as a compromise, shall we? Goose brain. Yeah. yeah goose, goose brain, indeed. Goose brain. Uh, Wool-headed sheep murders. My, actually, my list here says goose brained dash Duncan Sturdy. I don't know quite what that is. <laughs> the wind rises over the river Arenal. Cold like the winter that has lingered too long, it blows south from Saldea, skimming the river surface, tangling around the bare branches of trees which should now be verdant. South and on it goes, splintering only as it encounters the ancient white curve of a bridge. One splinter moves east along the Camelon Road, fading with each mile its force spent. The last vestige of the wind is enough to turn the cloak of a farmer, swearing at his overturned wagon. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time. But it was a beginning. The road is had is blocked, uh, and the hedgerows of the local farms are close in to the road here. To go around the fallen wagon means backtracking an hour or more, then crossing fields to rejoin the road further along. Hold your horses, the farmer, Harbin Vic, mutters from under his wagon. The wheel's bloody shattered, but I have a spare, right enough. If I can get the wagon righted and my bloody produce off the road, light, 
Don't send your horses over it. Food is tight enough right now without crushing good turnips in the dirt. We'll clear the road in no time. Burn me, we will. We're saying is the wheel doesn't turn. <laughs> this wheel doesn't turn. It is true. Um, well, and we pan back and we can see uh, that there are uh, probably half a dozen people uh, along along this road. So hedge is close by on either side of you. Um, and uh, all sort of waiting with various levels of impatience uh, for Harbin Vic to actually get his stuff cleared out of the road, get his wagon righted uh, and get moving on. Two of the half dozen people in there are our characters. Uh, and this seems like an excellent opportunity uh, for me to suddenly put them on the spot and ask them what they think their characters might look like, uh, given they've not only had about five minutes with these characters before we turn the cameras on. So um, let's start um, with uh, your character, Colin. Um, who are they? What do they look like? What are they currently doing while this guy is trying to clear his clear his uh, produce off the off the road and get his wagon righted? Well, my name is uh, Lerival. I am a um, minor noble, but I feel pretty much a major noble of uh, Andor in my own uh, in my own mind. I am well dressed with a slim short sword by my side. Um, and I am looking around to see if there are any other nobles and their gallant, arms, strong armsmen with them to take to, to take lead. Um, but even if there are, I am going to step forward and uh, see what I can do. Okay. Um, standing possibly behind uh, Laravel is uh, Duncan's character. Tell us about I'm, Duncan's character. I'm, I'm Rial Venter. And... I'm looking quite carefully and can see I appear to only be in like a cloak and clothes. No armour, it would appear, from looking through the character. <laughs> but, very natural looking. I've got a huge sword, though. A great sword, in fact. Oh. Well, it's not a good sword, it's a great sword. And, and I am here... <laughs> to... Pizza has arrived. Being delivered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm here to keep Laraval safe. That is my primary purpose here. I am very much your arm, kind of armsman in waiting. But as I said, a little bit nervous looking at the uh, armor stuff. But I think that's more of a wheel of time thing, isn't it? Not <laughs> well, I mean, to not not to break immersion immediately. Uh, but I, I will actually say this because it's quite an interesting aspect of the wheel of time role playing game. Uh, it is trying to model very much what we see in the books. And there's actually not a great deal of armour on show uh, in the books. Uh, so what is actually done is to, um, within the Wheel of Time role-playing game, uh, available no longer from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no good bookshops. <laughs> no, no good bookshops stock it at all. Um, uh, they've actually taken it, well, I mean, they've given you a choice essentially. Uh, you can either have a class defence bonus uh, or uh, an armour defence bonus uh, and they don't stack so you have got something of an armour class based on your level of armors, armorsman it's not very much yes I will, I will grant you that I think that's, I'm not seeing it <laughs> <laughs> it's higher than 10 <laughs> yeah mine's not much higher than 10 no, no, no. but uh, neither, neither of you are an armour um, so you were stepping forward, Laravel. Oh, it's not a role in life, though, is it? I don't think that's a character that's not really... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm somewhat heroic. So, so, Farmer, what's going on here? How have uh, you done this? The, 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 the whole rim shattered, he says, he points down, points down the wheel. Uh, bloody potholes. I, I'm a Queensman, no, make no mistake. I, I, it's, I'm, not, uh, I'm not complaining about the way the road's being kept. It's just that this particular bit of road uh, seems to have escaped the, the keen eye uh, of the Royal Road Keepers, if that's a thing. The Royal Road Keepers, indeed. We're big fans of the Royal Road Keepers. <laughs> Are, they, are there strong men wandering around, or strong women? That's right, I'm concerned. Hey, are there any people that are strong, knocking around? Uh, there are. I mean, there, there are a couple of husky-looking fellows uh, waiting, waiting behind. Then I shall say, hey, you there, you uh, husky-looking fellows. I'm not going to go for the swear list. The swear list at this point. 
Uh, Cart up and so this chap can put a new wheel on. You got a spare wheel? Uh yes, yes, yes. Right, right, you are, sir. I, I do have one of those. And he sort of uh, uh, pulled pulls aside um, uh, a, a blanket, which is sort of because the because the wagon's no longer horizontal. It's some more of an more of an angle. Uh, he sort of pulls the pulls the blanket aside, and, and in the base of the of the wagon, uh, he does have. A, I, I've been worrying about that wheel. I, it's only been a matter of time, but uh, uh, you know how it is. Uh, one thing drives out another. No, that's the wrong franchise. Uh, one thing drives out another, uh, and I just haven't got around to fixing it. I suppose now, now I have no choice. Yeah. Well, the wheel turns as the wheel weaves. Wheel weave. So I think. So. Uh, Pattern weaves, patterns, not the wheel, the pattern. No, the wheel. Does it? Oh, I don't know. The wheel weaves. I'll check this the one. wheel wills. The wheel, we, yeah, exactly. Look at that. It's practically corporate. We know this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, real, get this wheel out the back. Can we help? Can we help? Is there oh. some. Bless me, yes. That would, uh, that would speed things along, no mistake. And he sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start gathering. No, actually, no. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, he sort of did this. Basically, he can't. Decide. He's, he's split between uh, starting to gather up his produce, which is lying somewhat rotting on the road, uh, or actually helping right his wagon and get the and get the wheel get the wheel on it. Um, uh, in the end, he decides he's going to come and help. He's not. Uh, he's not a husky fellow, uh, but he's going to come and help with the wagon uh, and get his produce off the ground once it's got a safe to, place to put. Um, so I think we should probably have a have a, a, a quick go at, uh, at making our first roll of today's session. Uh, so uh, Rial, if you're going to be uh, helping with this, uh, let's just have a, a straightforward strength check, please. Shall we do, shall we do that? Shall we, let's go for it. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's, uh, I technically you rolled a strength save there. We won't worry about that too much. Though. Well, which one would you like me, sir? The uh, just your basic. There we go. Oh, there we Right, okay. So, real, real, real heads over towards the wagon, uh, and at first glance, he sort of doesn't quite get his grip right uh, because he's, he's 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 clearly attempting to. But then he sort of flexes and heaves, and and the wagon rights itself, uh, uh, allowing allowing um, Harbin to sort of start manoeuvring the wheel into position. Uh, there is much there is much colourful swearing, uh, but Harbin is Harbin is clearly. Uh, happy to be happy to be making progress. It's oh, oh light's blessings on you all. Uh, uh, I, I I feared I was going to be here for hours, but uh, we'll be done in no time. Oh yes, oh yes. Get on with it, bloody buttered onions. Oh no, that's not what he. Means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can call him bloody buttered onions. I think that that's more a term more of a term of. Well, there was a comma. There was a comma in there. <laughs> That was a reference to bloody buttered onions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, I was I, I was saving that one. <laughs> <laughs> In the name of the light, make way. A new voice declares from the other side of the fallen wagon. The voice is coming from further down the road, but high up. A rider, though you can't see him just yet. Soon as I can, be sure of it. Harbin grumbles. I've noticed I'm only doing Harbin's voice when I'm reading from my script. I seem to be forgetting to do Harbin's voice when I'm just role-playing him. I'm such a brilliant games master. I'm it's the level of professional. It's the level of professional we've come to Almost have it. In the name of the light, make way, the voice repeats, except it says name slightly strangely. The light can bloody well wait until we get this wheel settled. Almost done. Blood and ashes, that's heavy. The new arrival slows his horse, but doesn't stop. He rides over the farmer's spilled load, crushing a crop of root vegetables under his horse's hooves. No! You bloody idiots! We have the wagon fixed now. Could you not have waited? Burn me, that's a month... He trails off as he finally registers the white cloaks the two newcomers are wearing. We are in the service of the light and will not be detained by the likes of you, the first of the white cloaks says. 
Harbin, though, is fuming. He stoops and picks up a crushed bundle of carrots, his hand shaking. It looks like he is contemplating throwing it at the pristine uniform of the White Cloaks. I will, I will put my hand on, on his and say, Peace there. This is trouble we could do without. <laughs> but he's... And, and, and his hands raising. The White Cloaks have now, despite the fact they did want to not stop earlier, have both drawn rein and are staring at the farmer, almost daring him to take action. They know that with any kind of provocation, uh, they can they can feel better about taking out their um, their annoyance with him. Uh, and, and you can see him basically. Uh, Harbin is he's sort of almost sort of winding back very slowly. Do you want to give me some sort of uh, uh, some sort of check to to uh, see how how well you are able to influence him? Can I persuade him? You certainly can. I attempt to do so. I'm with legendary persuasion levels. With legendary persuasion levels. Uh, again, in the actual version of this, it would be a diplomacy check, but we are, as I said, faking it until we make it using uh, a, a rather corrupted version of uh, 5e uh, for this as well. Um, he, he kind of takes a breath, um, and the white cloak sort of snorts at him, and then, then clucks his uh, reins, and the horse uh, moves off, and the pair of them take it down the road. Um, they're getting, they get, they're, they're, they, 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 they're acting like they own the road these days. They're not, uh, they're not followers of Morgays. They seem to, they seem to, Queen Morgays. They don't seem to owe uh, allegiance to anyone but themselves. It's not right, I tell you. Yeah, they're. All for the Queen of Guys wouldn't allow that. They're, they're just muscle brain cretins. That's what they are. <laughs> where, Rob, where is Morgays at this point? Is uh, she around in Ant? Or she, she's wandered off at this point? Queen Morgays is, um, uh, is, is still in Camelin, yes. Um, this, um, this adventure, <laughs> for want of a better word, uh, is set during uh, uh, about the midpoint of Book One. So she's. Still very cool. much in residence in Camelot. Uh, in fact, I will say that um, as you've been travelling down the road, you've been travelling west away from Camelot for the moment, um, there have been a lot of people travelling east, uh, a lot of people excited by the idea of getting, in, getting to Camelot in time uh, to at least catch a glimpse of uh, the false dragon who is supposed to be uh, being brought before Morgays by the Aes Sedai who have captured him. Uh, to show him off, to show off the power uh, of the Aes Sedai and uh, Tarvalon. And when we say dragon, we mean book one. Yeah, Lugain. Lugain the Blah. I'm not to go out of character, apologies. I, I... <laughs> yeah, that'll uh, be. There's a spoiler in there somewhere. That'll, uh, that'll be to, to, to our viewers, you may have already gathered this is not going to be uh, a terribly immersive uh, and... Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, could be if we wanted to check. Them. I mean, it certainly could be, uh, but that's not really the place we're in this evening. It seems critical role. This is not. No, no, I, I am not Mercer, and uh, have no pretensions of being so. Although so I'm, we're. Um... I'm working on his length of hair. I think that's that's, that's <coughs> probably about the word the similarities goes. You're doing better at it than someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think I have one suitably uh, <laughs> suitably hard at that point to be honest you goat spawned toad right <laughs> so we're uh, <laughs> I'm running out are we um so we're heading to Kemlin yeah oh no you're heading away from Kemlin you're running away your home's in Kemlin, uh, but uh, your house uh, when it had any kind of uh, um, geography to call its own as it were um, its sphere of influence was um, far to the west of Andor uh, between uh, Whitebridge and Bearlong and you are on the road towards Whitebridge at the moment oh excellent no white cloak there Andy we're wandering down that way well we're off to seek the horn anyway aren't we really that's what we're after I reckon yeah well uh... are we is that your we are is that your okay 
Yep, we're off to seek the horn. Um, the horn of Valair. You've hey. done you've done me a great service here, my lord, and I, and I appreciate it. He says, um, directing this at uh, Laravel, obviously not. I'm defined that Real did most of the, the literal heavy lifting of all this. Um, <laughs> but um, he says, you've done me a great service, my lord, but um, I, I, I fear that uh, I, 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 I don't suppose I could impose on you a little bit further. My, my, my farmhouse, I, I'm, I'm taking the wagon back there. There's no point in taking this. Uh, this crop into into Whitebridge like this, uh, but I, I, I'm going to need some help to get it to get it all moved back to the farmhouse. I mean, I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't impose, but if you can spare your man uh, to help with this, or, or, or uh, you're welcome, obviously, uh, to come along as well. But uh, he sort of looks hopefully at you. For uh, I think we're in need of a we're in need of a meal at some point, so we'll uh, oh. we can escort you to your farm for a for, for the. Yeah, for a meal and board. Sort of, yeah. Tugs his forelock. Uh, it's not really helped my hair. Um, he tugs his forelock uh, and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where my forelock is. I think it's there. <laughs> it's more of a rear lock. <laughs> Have you still got the little ponytail on the back, Colin, or do you cut that off? Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, about, it's about 12 inches now. Mm. <laughs> Um, so you set off. I, he he turns off the road, um, uh, and uh, cuts between uh, down a track basically between uh, between these close hedges, uh, and he says, oh, "This land here is all mine. Uh, we've been farming it in the name of Good Queen Morgays for four generations now. But this winter, this winter has been a harsh one indeed." Uh, we should have we should have crops in the ground in all these fields by now, but uh, you see they're like frozen and and, uh, and untended as yet. It's been a long winter. It's been a very long winter. Winter's coming. <laughs> I'm sure that's the wrong franchise, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. Then. Uh, as he approaches, uh, as the wagon approaches uh, his house, um, he he sort of mutter, starts muttering to himself. He says, "The farm's awfully quiet. I left uh, I left everyone here uh, looking after the place before heading to market. And where is everybody?" Oh, I sense I sense the touch of the shadow. I'm going to draw my sword at this point. Okay, behind me, real. Let's see what's going on here. Head towards the farm door. Okay. Um, as you are heading towards the farm door, um, from uh, the barn uh, off to off to the side, uh, you do hear something moving. It could just be a horse, but it, it certainly sounds quite big. In the barn. Yeah. It's not as heroic a place to go into, but you know, we'll see where we'll we'll go we'll go with what we've got. I'll, I shall. I shall be walking in front of real, but not too far in front of real, but heroically in front of real, right. but not too heroically in front of real. I and I shall go to the door. Line, but I can I can picture that quite strongly in my mind. Yes. And I shall <laughs> kick down the door <laughs> and say. As you approach the door, you will you will notice that uh, it's already someone's really got got ahead of you on the whole kicking it down. Uh, it's hanging oh. off its hinges right now. Uh, the top hinge is more or less still intact. Uh, but it's swinging on the bottom hinge completely, uh, completely splintered off the wood frame. Cool. I'm going to be heroically just behind real at this point. Okay, make perception checks, please. Uh, yeah, I think the, the great swords coming out, although great swords are pretty big, aren't they? They are. They are pretty big. Mm -hmm. And what have you done? And the dice roll over seven to eight. You're not doing well, it is true. Uh, <laughs> there is a distinctive smell as you approach the farm, uh, the barn. Um, it is a smell of blood, freshly spilled, uh, and something else, something bitter and acrid, uh, of uh, stale sweat, but but worse than that somehow. So we're not talking blood and ashes here, are we? No, we're talking well, about yeah. something smelly. Um, and then bloody onions. <laughs> it's almost certain. It's almost certain. <laughs> 
onions. <laughs> Buttered onions in here. This is going so well. Um, yes, a shape. A shape moves in the darkness of the barn. Uh, it is much bigger than a than a human. It is much bigger than a person. Uh, and the smell is coming from it. You catch a glimpse, an impression of fur and horns. And then <coughs> from out of the darkness, uh, you see... I don't know why I'm suddenly revealing this on my on my roll 20 map because I'm not showing that to anyone but my players uh, but this thing it is it is huge uh, hairy part man part beast horns curl from its head and it levels a wicked looking sword in your general direction you thought these were only myths you thought these did not exist but surely Surely this must be a Trolloc. Trollocs? What time of day is it? Uh, it's mid-morning. Oh, what were you thinking of getting lunch? There's a Trolloc! <laughs> <laughs> I just know uh, So it's more the, 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 the shadows. We just, okay, we'll focus on the Trolloc. This, mm. okay, so have we ever seen a Trolloc before? You will never have seen yeah. a tribe, but they're, 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 so they, we... they, clearly they exist in the world uh, because there's one there right there. Um, <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, every, everyone down everyone down south in Andor essentially kind of assumes that they are myths and legends, or if they exist at all, uh, they are confined to the borderlands and the blight beyond it. Um, but. It, so this is the first time you've ever seen one of these things uh, in the real world and it is it is huge it is scary i think i might actually uh, give me give me wisdom saving throws from both of you actually right jack oh, i'm trying to find an appropriate term comment um, there we go so wisdom did you say wisdom saving yes yeah. please yeah oh brilliant brilliant Okay, so Laravel is, is heroically standing up to the Trolloc, uh, <laughs> where his, his bodyguard and, and armsman is going to spend at least round one, uh, just kind of nonplussed by the whole thing. I'm going to be thinking on the words, white livered son of goats. <laughs> I, I have every confidence that you are, yes, that's exactly They apparently are cowardly men, and maybe that is me. <laughs> roll, me some, those... roll me some of this. For those who've never seen Duncan play a role-playing game, this is standard. <laughs> um, I wasn't highlighted. I don't know how to be highlighted. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll add token. I'll add the initials. But I think what we know is the Trollocs going first. <laughs> yes. uh, so the stat block I'm using, I was quite interested in this. My stat block I'm using uh, is the one from the 3.5 uh, Wheel of Time role-playing game. How it compares... Uh, to, um, uh, largely fifth edition characters is going to be really fascinating to find out. We're about to find out how well it translates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, my, my my phone died. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone all horizontal. <laughs> okay. Um, so. The Trolloc seems reluctant to leave the barn. It seems more comfortable in the darkness of the of the of the, uh, uh, of the depths of the barn, uh, but that doesn't mean it can't reach out and grab you. Uh, so it is going to lumber towards the very sort of terminus of the light dark and swing its massive sword. It looks more like a scythe with a with a hand with a sword handle on one end of it, basically, and it <coughs> wickedly curved sword slices out towards Laravel, who is heroically uh, striding forwards, wondering what happened to his, his bodyguard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and hits arm class six. Well, that is going to be a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> that is going to be a struggle. Uh, that, is, that is clearly a miss. Uh, he, he perhaps perhaps it's the perhaps it's the difference between the dark and the light. Yeah. Uh, perhaps his eyes are adjusting to that to that difference. Uh, but right now, um, you are you are ducking under that blade, uh, and it does not find its mark. Laravel, what would you like to do? 
Well, I'm going to shout, light, protect me, and I'm going to swing at it with my longsword, two-handed, heroically across. But I'm not, I'm not stepping in. I'm still staying slightly outside. Gotcha, gotcha. Right, okay. Swing heroically, please. Dun, 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 dun. 16. Yes. Um, blood and ashes and burn me, but that's a hit. Hooray! Um, despite your fear, uh, you know that this is your moment. This is the moment that you've been building your entire life towards, facing off against a real danger, a chance to begin to earn back your family name. And your sword strikes the trollock and carves a, a, a meaty chunk out of, its, out of its shoulder. It roars in anger. It's fetid breath. Um, uh, uh, wrinkling your, wrinkling your, uh, that's a really, uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> it was going so well. It was going really well and then I completely lost all words. I would like to point out to every watcher, I am a writer um, and, and I can make words good uh, on occasion, but apparently not right this instant. Anyway, let's just imagine fetid breaths have happened. Good. You're an author, Rob. You're not just a writer, you're an author. Yeah. I'm awfully good at it. Um, uh, real, um, <laughs> real. Uh, you are, you are, uh, you basically, you, you are. Uh, this this turn, you are sort of. Once you've once you've kind of processed what you're seeing, once you've seen this myth made, disgusting real flesh, you can kind of get yourself back under control. But uh, we are missing you out this turn. Let me ask. You light forsaken fool. <laughs> uh, I'll stay here. <laughs> the trollic is going to continue its assault on uh, Lerival. And every time I do that, I lose the character. There he is. Professionalism, that's what it's all about. His scythe sword, this time stabbing towards you. Not the most efficient way to use it, you expect. No. Uh, a closer blow, but it's still having problems adjusting to the daylight outside of its darkened barn. Uh, this time the sword whistles past your, your shoulder. Uh, you feel the, the, the air move as the sword uh, just misses you. Yeah. There about. Well, Are you I'm continuing your assault on the Trolloc? I'm beginning to worry about the lack of armor, but I am still doing so. If I'm going to hunt for the horn, which is not a euphemism, then I am definitely going to have to fight Trollocs. So I am swinging again at it. All right. But this time, I'm probably slightly less effective. Yes. Still heroic. Less. Oh, yeah. Less, uh, yeah, but I, I get that. Okay. I mean, obviously, you know, as these things go, this is, this is, uh, as attack rolls are not just a single thing. There is, at this point, there is a bit of back and forth between you and the Trolloc. Uh, as it bats your your sword aside uh, with its with its mighty uh, scythe sword, uh, but now Rial has has gathered himself and is ready to join the fray. Step aside, goose brain. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, I'm going to bring this up at your annual appraisal if you carry on with the swearing. <laughs> Do I too make make with the air? Yeah, yeah, that's been <laughs> everybody, everybody's really this whole being in a real combat thing. I mean, you've practiced yeah. clearly. You've had a lot of practice, uh, but actually, this may even be the first time you've actually fought genuinely for your life. But it seems as if it's any help that the Trolloc is no more experienced. And we're back around to the Trolloc again. This time, I'm not going to lose the character sheet on the on the battle map. There we go. Found it again. Is he hero heroically going for real this time? Am I? Am I? Am I actually rolling a d20 with this? Yes, I am. Good. It's very. It's just clearly very confused about not being fifth edition. Really, um, it's it, uh, this thing. Um, it's going to have to. It's going to have to come out into the sunlight uh, fairly soon, uh, because clearly it's having problems limiting itself like this. Uh, but another blow. Uh, at this point, um, Harbin behind you is kind of going. I don't know why we're so scared of Trollocs. Clearly, they don't do it. They don't harm. Oh, my wife and daughter, as he sort of looks around for them. Oh. oh, yes. Now, this blood that was here, this was here before we started this. Very much so. 
Could be a horse. <laughs> Could be a horse. Best. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, it, can I see anything? Is there any... Um, he's in the doorway in the other minute. Can I see why he's scared, why he's not coming out, and can I see anything I might be able to cut and drop on his head? <laughs> oh, or I, similar. I, I like both those questions. Um, it does seem that as a creature of, of the shadow, he's not super, super fond of coming out into the light. Uh, you don't think he's, okay. he's, he's, he's um, to, bothered to the point of he's not going to do it, but he would rather be in darkness if he possibly can. Uh, but in terms of, oh yes, I think, well, I mean, this is a barn. Tell me what you're looking in here that you think could be useful for dropping on somebody's head. Given that he deals with root vegetables, there could be bags of potatoes or similar that could be, for some reason, hanging up. Yeah. Hanging up on rope because of the the need to hang yes. uh, potatoes Very this far easily. south. <laughs> potatoes need to be hung when you're uh, in uh, when you're near Whitebridge. It's a it's a Whitebridge tradition. Yes, it is indeed, as we all know from Book Four. So if we um, <laughs> if I can slash a rope and uh, whack it into the back of his head to knock him out into the sunlight, so that my colleague can actually vaguely get close to him, okay. I shall do so. I like that. Um, Give me, I, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it is an attack roll, so give me an attack roll and let's, let's see how, how effective your your solution is. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Five. You, you swing along, so they, they make ropes quite sturdy out here. <laughs> I've got a bit. <laughs> it's a little bit cut, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Just wait there, Trollock. <laughs> Roll great idiot springs to mind. <laughs> I'm sure it does. Uh, Rial, your your um, your friend and uh, and uh, uh, Liege Lord is perhaps a little bit too strong, but your your friend and, and the noble that you follow uh, yeah. has, has clearly got a cunning plan in mind. But it's taking a little longer to bring to fruition than you might otherwise have liked. <laughs> Aside, Larivel, I am uh, going after this white-livered son of a goat. <laughs> I'm, not <a> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You to use a swear word every background. <laughs> it's in character. It says so here. <laughs> How does oh, that do that great sword swipe? That oh, right. Sorry, I hadn't realised you'd make that. <laughs> yes. Uh, the trolley is busy sort of staring at his rock to lair of his I was staring at him to distract him from the sword and arcing in to the side there. That is a mighty blow indeed. You have struck the, the, the trolley uh, and your blade cuts him down his chest uh, and the flesh peels away and blood immediately soaks his body. Um, he staggers back uh, roars in agony, but he is not yet defeated. May I heroically surge? Having ooh, ooh, heroically surging is an option available to you as a level one armsman in the Wheel of Time role playing game. Not available in any shops. I will. Um... Please do. Oh, that is a that is a that is a meaty hit as well. Yes. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> By the light. <laughs> well, uh, so describe to me the finishing move. I'm, I, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always excited to give players an opportunity uh, to, to have their character be nice and cinematic when the opportunity arises. So I'm the, the, the So the first movement basically slid, came down his chest. Yes. So he's and not taking him out. So we've gone down there. I think it's a head headshot. I think, I think I think with with thirteen oh. damage when he's already, when he only had a, only had a couple of hit points left. I think that's probably true. Yes, uh, you you shout ying uh, as in the computer game sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> I probably oh, you prancing she goat. But actually, that's, <laughs> actually looking. No, that's wholly inappropriate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember when I hired you. When I hired you, your previous boss said he's quite effective in combat, but he just randomly swears a lot. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! The trolley head. He goes, no, bobbles along the ground and goes, falls into a bucket. Oh, oh excellent! Yes. 
sort of rattling noises as as the trollock sinks to its knees and then collapses sideways. I'm going to heroically try and avoid throwing up. Says Harbin, coming up behind you. Now that the danger seems to be passed. Nope. I think we need wait. Here, there was only one trollock. I think that's what we need to quickly establish. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll hold him back, real. Uh, do you want to go and check and just uh, check for other trollocks that might have caused all this blood that was on the floor? Harmon is uh, Harmon. Wait here while he checks for more trollocks. Yeah. Well, one I am checking for trollocks, despite this trolloc searching suggestion. Yes. Uh, but yes, can we try and assess the real the real situation because it might be. Um, for our um, colleague here. I'll be honest, when I was planning this session, I was planning to have the family uh, of the farmer murdered in the in the barn, but I don't know that the tone that we're going for in this session <laughs> <laughs> really matches really matches that. So um, there is there is clearly a dead sheep in the barn, uh, and the farmer's wife and daughter are busy hiding under a bale of hay or something uh, near the back. The trollock had never spotted them, so. Huzzah, you have rescued them. Heroic. We've been, that's well, good. That is ideal. Well. Could have turned out so differently. <laughs> they could, couldn't they? They We've been later. If we'd arrived any later. Could have been another sheep gone. <laughs> well, we shall, um, once I'm assured that it's safe, not that I wouldn't have gone in there anyway, because I'm heroic in that way, I will, um... Can we... So look, Trollocs been seen around this farm ever before? Was this the first sighting? I, 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 I didn't think I didn't think such things even existed. I, I, outside of nightmares and and a gleeman's tale, no. I, I, I mean, I, I'd heard they had them up in the Borderlands, but I, I, Magda, when did when, when when did this thing appear? She says. Uh, oh, it was terrible. It was just after you left uh, on the on the wagon to go to market. Uh, there were three of them. Uh, two of them continued on to in the general direction. She points uh, generally towards Whitebridge, uh, but this one this one seemed seemed hungry uh, or, or something. Uh, it chased us. Uh, we made it to the barn, and it, it was distracted by. And she sort of uh, uh, takes a moment to mourn the loss of uh, a dear departed sheep. Uh, but, but, but thank the light you arrived in time. Oh, they, they, they. and she sort of goes to give her husband a hug, scooping up her daughter uh, in the family embrace uh, in a moment of uh, heroism realised. It's a good job she died, otherwise that bit of exposition would have been really difficult to get across to us. So that's <laughs> ideal. Um, well, I, I mean, meat's back on the menu, boys, but um, I think we might have to go and warn the inhabitants of Whitebridge that something's going on. Okay. So telling them we'll put the uh, put the uh, mutton on for uh, for dinner. We'll be back for breakfast, and we'll uh, jump on the horses, I reckon, Riel, and <coughs> this see if we can catch up with these trollocks. Okay, great stuff. I think we should be we should be saying we should yes yes boss <laughs> yes. Well, the way I see it, you got to take life as it comes. Run when you have to, fight when you must, rest when you can. That's what I say. That's what the first book. <laughs> I've I just finished rereading the first book, which is why I thought I recognise that quote from somewhere, probably. And uh, but uh, because there's a, another YouTube channel that I that I watch called um, Nerdy Nightly, uh, who who watched the show, really enjoyed it, and have gone back and have been reading book one, and they've been doing weekly. Um, sort of book club kind of th kind of stuff, um, and uh, it's been really fun watching them because they haven't they've never read any of the books. They've just seen the show, and they're comparing what they read in the book now to what happened in the show, and theorising about what's coming next. And it's 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 been quite fun, sort of recapturing uh, the sort of the first viewing of 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 the book, um, and uh, yeah, they 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 are quite astonished by um, how much the show changed. And how much? Uh... I think it was one of the. At a high... 
at a big, at a kind of like the big picture level, it was actually very similar. Yeah. Just an awful lot of the detail wasn't quite how. <laughs> but it's not. None of these things are just copying the blooming books, are they? I mean, it would be it would take be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, and no, I agree with that. And when they do future series, the way they split up into so many st- um, story strands, yeah. how on earth anyone's going to keep up? That's... Oh yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they've they've talked about doing eight seasons. I mean, uh, Rafe Rafe Jenkins, the showrunner, has said basically. He has a plan for realising the entire series that will take eight seasons to complete. Um, which means that... <laughs> he can miss book so, 6 or 12, that's fine. <laughs> six, six seasons fewer than there are books, uh, even if you don't include New Spring. Um, <laughs> so, um, hashtag not sponsored by Diet Coke, by the way. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, so there's going to be so much stuff that's going to have to be cut there's going to be stuff which is given to different characters there are going to be probably I would imagine some fan favourite characters that we never meet Uh, I'm pretty convinced for example that we will not meet uh, who are in the sniffer in season 2 you reckon? Pretty f- yeah, they could be right though. Could just leave it to Perrin, couldn't you, the whole way or something? Or I mean, that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, particularly because Rand is not with the group going south, uh, as the show has had it. Uh, anyway, so, spoilers. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> What's the plan here? Are you going straight to Whitebridge, or are you trying to follow where the where the Trollocs went? Um, tell me what you're doing. What would be I- bridge from here would it be a longer track or is it um the quick i mean the quickest way to whitebridge would probably to go up the farm track to the main road and then cut west again okay. uh, but you could uh, go uh, to the banks of the arenel uh, and just follow that up to whitebridge as well but that would be so crossing based the... on our knowledge of trollocs they don't like water do they they don't they don't like crossing water deeper than they can see is deep you um, but um, also they're unlikely to be travelling by the road yeah do we go cross country then I don't know it might be a good idea to go go the roadway and catch, catch them up, up if we go faster than that we could uh, come okay. up at the path would they maybe check with the um farmer are there any other farms between here and whitebridge that they might get distracted by hello hi my name's colin murray and welcome this is my youtube channel <laughs> we're in all right to point out by the way that i'm also author of the book the bumper oh. book of workforce planning <laughs> <laughs> available in all good bookshops well amazon so we haven't even plugged the second book yeah from author rob edwards oh what do you mean you've got a second book you've just got i've you've got, got, I've got quite a, you've just got, got, got a lot of copies i've got a lot of copies in here i've got about a hundred they're not selling as quick as i'd like <laughs> and I'm, sec- I'm author of the ascension machine <laughs> the scene oh, yeah. coming out of march the 8th the crossover paradox the exciting second year of gray at the justice academy with all of his friends in tow. I actually haven't got both the copies of Crossover Paradox yet, otherwise otherwise I'd be waving those at the camera as well. I'm feeling so small being the only non-author on this video. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, surprisingly, my non fiction Yeah, yeah, I know. We've still got time. <laughs> Talking about time, Talking how's this week? <laughs> Did we decide? I've, I've completely forgotten. Did we decide we're going cross country or back to the? If there are no, if there are no kind of like farmyards that they're going to go take out on the way, or there obvious will, one. There will absolutely be more farms between here and Whitebridge because this. So, is, I mean, Whitebridge is quite a. Uh, I mean, not not sort of Camelin scale, but it, it is a large enough town that it's got a lot of mouths to feed. So yes. There how, will be how, how long ago did they run away? The other two. Are we, are, are we going to be able to catch them up quickly on horses, or...? They're, they probably left about half an hour ago. Now, oh, come on, let's track them cross-country. 
Yep, go on then, boss. You lead. You must be good at this. I am very good at horses, generally. Okay. Um, who is good at... I mean, are you, are you just sort of heading that direction and hoping to encounter Trollocs? Or are you tracking the Trollocs? Or what's your approach? I think uh, they leave quite a big track, these things. We're attempting to track them. Okay. Uh, then I need a survival check, I believe. So, real, are you taking the lead with that? Absolutely. There we go. Help. All right, yes. Um, they are heavy uh, and uh, not taking any great attention to covering their tracks. Um, so once you've, uh, once you've spotted uh, the Trollocs tracks, uh, it, uh, it is relatively easy to keep them in view. Uh, and you power your horses on towards Whitebridge. Uh, there is a trail of destruction these things have left. They, they, they've, they've slaughtered animals, uh, just seem to have delighted in wanton destruction, breaking fences as they go. They seem really um, determined to draw attention to themselves almost. Um, and it is not long before you catch sight. Um, about two fields over, uh, you see two more of these hulking brutes. They don't look the same, but they do look identical, if you see what I mean. Uh, they are not... I mean, they are, they are no, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they are identically trollocs, but each trollic is, is slightly different from each other. So uh, one of them is a, sort of a, a, a wolf snout. Uh, one of them actually has a bird's beak. Uh, one of them has hooves. One of them has uh, paws. Uh, so... They are, they are twisted reimaginings of man and animal together. Uh, they are distinctively identical, in they are definitely all Trollocs, but they all look different from each other because I'm trying to justify my nonsense sentence. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yes, you can see there's, there's two of them ahead of you. Uh, what would you like to do about it? Well, so there's two of them ahead of us and another two coming. Is it just two? You're, you're, fo you're following the two that were in this farm, yes. Cool, there's, just no, there's no more. Good, I got confused. Excellent. Well, let's... Um, should we heroically follow them still? I mean, I don't... Do we want to... Um, I want to engage two of them. Not that they seem to be that difficult to uh, dispatch last time, but I think yes. that might have been a bit of a... So a, a, bit of a fluke on your part. I mean, even a... Even a blind pig finds an acorn sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the eye of the world, apparently. <laughs> I recognised it again, having recently read. <laughs> cool. Um, I mean, the immersion in this is extraordinary. Is. Come on, let's get him. Every other sentence is definitely adding to the immersion. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut the other one down, you fucking. Right, come on, let, let's, come on, Rio, let's get him. Welcome em. to our five minute <laughs> game of Wheel of Time, the role play game. <laughs> Not available in the shop. Um, Have we got any ranged weapons? Because I don't want to get too close to these things. I mean, they smell worse than real. Well, but, but it wasn't needed. However, <laughs> my ranged <laughs> weapon is me basically throwing my sword at them. What's wow. your weapon? You do seem to have come out with that. I, w I would imagine uh, that... I mean, I don't give it on your character sheet, but I imagine at least one of you has a sling on you. Probably Real, actually. But mostly, mostly used for hunting game uh, when you're out on the road more than uh, more than hunting trollocs. Uh, can we get ahead of them? Do you think to try and get the um, the the white cloaks engaged? What? You can certainly try. So, what? To describe to me how you are attempting to do that. Well, if we get around them, we're on horses, so we're going to attempt to power around the... If we know which, if we can see which way they're going in a straight line, and they're following the river. If we can take a bit of a, a an arc round, and... Uh, they, I mean, they're killing things, but they're not slowing down and, and ransacking things. They, they seem to be heading directly towards Whitebridge, by the way. Okay. Um, let's have... Uh, let's have... Animal handling, I think. Is it, for, is it for riding? I think it is in, in fifth edition, anyway. Uh, let's let's have, let's have um, 
Wow. You are really not, uh, there's a lot of very poor dice trolls going on today. Uh, but okay, uh, Rial does pull slightly ahead of you. Uh, but you are, you are, you are. They don't you fall off. <laughs> you don't fall off. <laughs> an, eight is a, an eight is not a great roll, but it's not enough for you to be falling off your horse. Um, I would like both of you to make perception checks as well, please. Okay. Now we're talking. This is, this is the sort of stuff that you are. Uh, Riel, you spot uh, over in the distance. Uh, a shadow moving against uh, two or three trees uh, and the shape and size of that shadow suggests to you that it might be a third trollop. Oh. Spit in your mother's milk. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not I'm thinking not. Like... Don't. <laughs> it's, an expression, it's an expression of disgust or... <laughs> Apparently, it's insulting at. I don't know. It, I'll move on to another. <laughs> Probably for next. Uh, Laraval, um, mm -hmm. you uh, do notice the shadow moving against the other trees. Um, but um, you also notice um, uh, a, a small flock of birds uh, from another copse um, sort of leap into, the, leap into the sky as though as though disturbed or distracted by something uh, and then you see um, arrows take three of those birds and then drop them to the ground weird there's so, something in that something using arrows in that wood yeah. are those birds as in ravens and crows or uh, no 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 they, they, they seem to be um, any old bird as if somebody They've been they've been scared by something, and the people shot them because they're trying to avoid being quite noticed. That that might be an interpretation, certainly. And we, are we heading towards those woods? Um. So you've got. You originally sort of coming this way, mm -hmm. following the Trollocs. Yeah. Uh, the Trolloc shadow you spotted was sort of over over here, so a bit off your route. Uh, yeah. And this cops of trees that you're seeing the birds coming out from is is up there so again all on your, all on your left um but each one each one is progressively slightly further away from you so just taking the gamble that these people in the woods are goodies i think what we should do is we should spur our horses between the trollocs drag them that, that way and lead them into a trap <laughs> So it's an interesting gamble, given it's our... <laughs> um, I like to think so. Well, let's, go, let's go all in on this particular... If we're going to hunt the horn, if we're going to hunt the horn, then we need to be um, brave with this stuff. We're going to be heroes. And like Arthur, you know Arthur Hawkwing. Arthur Hawkwing, possibly. <laughs> so, and you're right, was... this is a very brave decision. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Let's go for it. Go on. I, I, I'm just here to try and keep you alive, boss. <laughs> Come on. Killing is as easy as dying. Any fool could do either. Come on. You are Get going. Boneheaded fool. <laughs> duty is duty is heavier than a mountain. Death is lighter than a feather, or whatever. Whichever, whichever way around it is. That's the one. Thanks, Lan. <laughs> okay. Crack. Crack brain. I found that's a more. This is a crack brain idea. Mm-hmm. What you signed up for? Pulling <laughs> your horses onwards, um, angling towards this copse of trees that uh, that the the archers were in. Uh, you draw closer uh, and feel the need to make another perception check. Okay. 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 Um, you spot one of the birds uh, that, had, that had fallen with the arrow piercing it. Uh, the arrow is crudely made um, and uh, the tip of it uh, seems to be some sort of um, more, more like a, a piece of scrap metal, a pointy bit of scrap metal rather than a, 
uh, a refined arrowhead. Well, that is a that's a red flag. That all right? That, that is a, a what we need to do is reevaluate the plan at this point. I think you need to be more careful with the way you lead me at this point. I reckon we need to avoid that wood as much as possible. Where, where, where into the plan execution are we in terms of pulling out of you, said you plan? Are, you are basically um, you're not at the copse of trees yet, but you are kind of right in the epicenter of these three. The two trollocs you were originally tracing, you've left you've left them in your dust. But in getting close to the copse of trees, you've also got closer to this one that was over here, and you are kind of in the middle of the triangle. Now. So we have executed plan. We've absolutely. Is good news. I mean, it's what you were. Saying, you, it's what you told me you were trying to do. They are, they, just, we uh, can't, it is. The We've got lots of opportunity. Seem to have spotted you. One of them roars in excitement, having spotted new prey. You are horrified when an answering roar comes from the trees ahead of you. Horrified, but not surprised. <laughs> I told you it was a bad plan. Right, let's go. Um, well, let's go. Let's go for. The, <laughs> let's go for the. Let us go for the one on his own and try and go that way. Can we go past? Cut him in half on, on, while riding past on the, on a horse. That would mean backtracking away from Whitebridge again. Oh, I said, well, all right, let's just carry on towards so Whitebridge. I'm high on my list at the moment, so backtracking from Whitebridge isn't. <laughs> let's go to Whitebridge. I mean, it's, it's entirely due, of course. No, we want to get a white bridge, but I was kind of hoping to go past one and whack it. Okay. But I don't want I don't want to get hit by um I don't want to get hit by arrows though. So we're going to avoid that lot because that oh. seems a bit vicious. Sure. They shot a bird for crying out loud. I mean, they are quite good shots. In fairness, you think that there were several more arrows in the sky, and it was probably just some numbers game at that point. But uh... all right, but that's a lot of bad guys. Let's avoid that. Yeah. We need to get to white bridge and warn them. Okay. Uh, so you turn your horses and drive them on again. Uh, let's have an animal handling roll because you're really pushing them as hard as you can go here without driving them into uh, uneven terrain or... Okay. Um, the horses stumble, but you manage to keep them going forwards. Um, one of them screams in pain as it, as it, as it goes, but you think it's... Uh, uh, and as it, as it continues on, it slows. You think it may... Uh, it may have damaged a leg. Uh, this is not probably a good news for the horse, but right now you have bigger concerns. Yeah. Looking back over your shoulder, you see that you are being followed. Not just the three trollocs you'd seen out in the open, but countless. Um, <laughs> it's probably like 12, but right in the moment you're, you're panicked. <laughs> <laughs> it's more fingers than I have. It is count, literally countless. <laughs> uh, but but fear and uh, and adrenaline uh, makes the numbers probably seem larger even than they truly are. Uh, as uh, as the trollocs, uh, but as you get closer to the city, as you get closer into Whitebridge, uh, they do tend to fall back a little bit. They seem they seem to be watching. You seem to be waiting for you to make a mistake. They're waiting for you to stumble. Waiting for us to make a mistake. <laughs> um, you approach the gates uh, of Whitebridge. Uh, a guard sees you approaching uh, and uh, calls for you to uh, calls for you to to declare yourselves. Who goes there? Who enters Whitebridge in such a hurry? It is the Lord Lerial and his armsmen. We have something to declare. <laughs> well, what is it, man? Speak up, my lord. Uh, there, are, there are countless Trollocs following us. <laughs> Trollocs? <laughs> yeah. There's no swearing in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolute Trollocs. <laughs> have you been drinking? Everyone knows Trollocs are legends. Okie dokie. All right, well, you have a good look at the legends coming this way, while the rest of us try and find somebody competent to speak to. Blood Ashes, man, can you not see the blood and ashes? <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> Your characters will have seen this before, but ju just, mm. just, to be, just, just to make this point, uh, that Whitebridge... Uh, is characterised by the by the bridge which gives it its name. It is a an ancient structure from the Age of Legends itself. Uh, it seems to be 
uh, far too far too um, fragile to support any weight at all but even as you approach into the into the city square uh, you can see caravans crossing over it without uh, uh, without any sign of any damage or or, or uh, creaking of the of the bridge it seems completely solid uh, I would like you to make me another perception check please is the white Brit is the Brit is that a defensible position um, I suspect you probably could uh, I mean it is it is inside the town and the town has walls um, so uh, right. so you, you might be better off defending the walls in the first place but if the walls yeah. were to fall I mean or you know you could take the, the classic show uh, description of how to defend yourself which is to go and stand out in front of some green screen uh, and hope that five of you can channel enough to kill every troll that's coming towards you let's try that give that a go that's uh, that's that's an approach yeah. um, give that a go Real is clearly distracted by what's behind, but uh, Laraval is looking around, looking for someone other than this unbelieving guardsman uh, to tell what's going on. Uh, and you see some sort of altercation outside a tavern nearby. Uh, an old white-haired man pushes his belongings across to two young lads, shouts at them to run, and turns to face a man in a black cloak. As the white-haired man stands forward, daggers seem to appear in his hands from nowhere and you realize as the man in black advances towards him his cloak does not move in the wind oh that doesn't look good man in black new target man in black <laughs> we've accidentally, accidentally walked into chapter 12 of... <laughs> i mean what were the odds eh? <laughs> <laughs> and sadly, you're back to me at this point. Uh, the video did keep recording for the first round or so of that combat, uh, and then after that it broke, and I didn't notice at the time, and that's a shame. But I, th I think leaving on a cliffhanger is quite a fun way uh, to end it. If you want to find out what happened next, go read Eye of the World, basically. Um, thank you very much to Colin Duncan for joining me for that. Uh, I had a blast with it. I hope you guys had fun with it too. Uh, and that's it for today and that's it probably for Wheel of Time content on the channel at least for a little while at least until we start getting news about season two uh, coming through uh, until then I will continue to be making videos if you want to hang around for um, Marvel and DC content and uh, Star Wars content and actually probably for the next few weeks content about my new book which is coming out in March uh, then please do hang around uh, I would very much appreciate it uh, but if not I will catch you next time we're back in the wheel of time cheers <laughs>